I put that book? <gasps> there it is. <laughs> Hello, church friends. Thank you for coming and checking this out this morning. This morning, we're going to be doing Sunday school from home. And we're going to learn about what happens next in the Christmas story. But before we read this story, I would like you to take a look at this picture. Did you or do you have something like that at home? Maybe you set it up for Christmas time. Maybe it's packed away now in the boxes. Or maybe it's still out there for you to see every day. I know some families keep their manger scene up all year as a reminder of Jesus and his love for us. I think that's pretty cool. But did you know that there's something wrong with this manger scene? Hmm. By the end of today's story, I want you to tell me what is wrong with the picture. Do you think you can do that? You'll have to listen closely to the story. Okay. So this story is all about what happened after the first Christmas. Let's check it out. So what did happen after the first Christmas? Let's take a look. This story is taken from Matthew 2. The Wise Men from the East One night, wise men from the East were gazing heavenward, studying the stars when they noticed that a new one had appeared. It was a big star, and it shone brighter than all the others. They stood gazing at it in wonder. A new star, they said. This must mean that a child has been born somewhere. And it is such a beautiful star, it must mean the child is very wealthy and important. It must be the child of a king. For a long time, they watched the star. And then one of them said, We must try to find this king so that we can kneel before him. For surely there has never been so rich and mighty a king on this earth before. So the wise men set off to look for the newborn child. Their servants went to fetch the camels, and the wise men prepared beautiful, expensive gifts. They even took a chest of gold. Then they mounted their camels and began to journey in the direction of the star. It was a long journey over high mountains and through great forests. They had to ride through countries that they had never visited before until they reached Israel. The young king for whom they were looking must be in this land, but how could they find him? They traveled to Jerusalem, the largest city, and on to the palace where surely a king would have been born. They requested an audience with King Herod, the cruel leader put there by the Romans. When he heard their story, he became alarmed. How was it that the wise men were looking for the king of the Jews? I am the king, thought Herod, and I want to remain king. Can there possibly be another king, a young king, who has just been born? Oh, this can't be, for I want to reign alone. I must know where I can find him, and then I had better kill him, for this child must never become king. Herod called on the scribes, who knew all about the sacred writings, to find out from the prophecies where this king would be born. It is written that he will be born in Bethlehem, they told him. Then the king spoke to the wise men. He asked, When 
Did you see this beautiful star? It was a long time ago, they replied. We first saw it when we were still in our own country, and we have been looking for the young king ever since, but without success so far. Then I will help you, said King Herod. He is in Bethlehem. Go there quickly and look. When you have found him, come and tell me, for I also want to go and kneel before him. The wise men didn't know that the king was wicked, and they quickly went on their way to Bethlehem, following the star as they had done before. It led them to Bethlehem, where it seemed to stop above a little house. They got off their camels, opened the door and went inside, where they found Mary and Joseph and the child Jesus. He looked like any other child, and they wondered if this was indeed the one they had been looking for. When they spoke to Mary and Joseph, they knew that they had come to the right place. He was no ordinary child, but was the one who would be the savior of the world. The wise men knelt before the young king to worship him and gave the presents of gold, sweet-smelling incense, and myrrh. These were expensive gifts to bring, but they gave them gladly, for they were pleased to have found the one they had been looking for. When they slept that night in Bethlehem, God spoke to them in a dream. He told them not to return to Jerusalem to King Herod, who wanted to kill the child, but to return home another way. So the wise men set off back to their own country. Their journey had been long and interesting and one that they would never forget. I am so glad that the wise men were wise enough to listen to God and not go back and tell King Herod about Jesus. I wonder how King Herod's doing and what's next in our story. Let's check it out. King Herod. In the meantime, Herod was wondering why the wise men had not returned to Jerusalem to tell him where the child was in Bethlehem. He was eager to find the baby in order to make sure he would never become king. But God had plans to protect Jesus. Joseph had a dream in which an angel spoke to him. Take the child and his mother and go away from here quickly. Go to Egypt and stay there until I tell you it is safe for you to return. Joseph woke up and told Mary what the angel had said. They immediately set off on the long journey to Egypt, where they would be safe from Herod. King Herod was unaware that the baby had escaped as he waited for the wise men to return. Finally, his patience ran out when he realized that they were not coming back. That night, he ordered that all baby boys in Bethlehem should be put to death. Now there is no chance that the king will still live to take my place, thought Herod. After Herod died, an angel told Mary and Joseph that it was safe for them to return to Israel. They made their way back, not to Bethlehem, but to Nazareth, where Joseph worked as a carpenter. Wow, King Herod sounds like a very mean man. I'm happy that Joseph listened to God and moved out of Bethlehem as quick as he could. Let's keep reading. I wonder what Jesus was like as a boy. Jesus as a boy. 
This story comes from Luke 2. When Jesus was a boy, he lived in Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. He looked like any other boy, but Mary knew in her heart that he was different, for he was the Son of God. Every year, Mary and Joseph traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. When Jesus was very small, he probably stayed at home. But like all Jewish boys, at the age of 12, he was allowed to go to the feast for the first time. The family traveled together that year to the temple where the feast was held to bring their offerings and pray to the Lord. The feast lasted for seven days and then everyone would return home. When Mary and Joseph got ready to make the journey back, they could not find Jesus anywhere. They didn't worry at first, as he was always sensible and obedient. They thought perhaps he had gone ahead with the other children and they would catch up with him on the road. They kept a lookout for him as they made their way but were concerned when they did not see him. When evening came and there still was no sign of Jesus, they decided to turn back to Jerusalem to look for him. They searched for three days and finally looked for him in the temple, which was quiet now that the crowds had gone home. As Mary looked around, she was relieved to see Jesus sitting among the wise old men, listening to what they had to say and asking questions. Never before had they come across a boy who understood them so well and could give such good answers. Mary ran towards Jesus. Jesus, she said, why did you do this to us? Your father and I have been so worried. We have been looking everywhere for you. Why did you look for me? Asked Jesus. Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? Then Mary knew that Jesus hadn't been disobedient. She had been worried about him because she had forgotten for a moment all that she knew. Then they returned home as a family to Nazareth, where Jesus lived until he grew up. Wow, I just love that story, didn't you? I love knowing that Jesus was a human just like us. He grew up, he was a child, and then a youth, and then a teenager. And when he started his ministry, he was over his 30s. Now, that tells us that Jesus experienced the things that we experience. Jesus had dinner with his family. Jesus ran in the mud probably one day. He worked um, in the workshop with his dad probably. He had conversations with people. He went to church just like us. See, Jesus was a human, and so he was like us in almost every way. But there was one way he was different. Do you know what that was? That's right. Jesus never sinned. He was perfect. So Jesus' life showed us how to be perfect and how to live without sin. And that's how we get closer to God and have a great relationship with God by asking God to forgive our sins so that we can have a closer relationship with him. Now, remember at the very beginning of this video, I asked you why the picture, the manger scene picture was wrong. Can you tell me why it was wrong? So, the wise men didn't visit Jesus as a baby. 
The wise men gave the gifts to a child. Jesus had grown up by then. It took them longer to get to Jesus on their travels. So next time you set up your manger, make sure that you don't include the wise men in it the Christmas night. That you wait maybe a couple of weeks later to show that the wise men traveled a far distance. And when they visited Jesus, he was already a child. So that's it for Sunday school today. I'm praying for you. And hopefully we'll see you back here at church soon. We'll talk to you later. That's it for this week. Have fun shining at home. We'll see you later.